Welcome to Retro Bassin. Today, we're going to be looking at and fishing with one of the craziest spinner baits that you've ever seen. The Blake Moore Double Chance from 1984. By the way, if this is your first time here at Retro Bassin and you like to fish it old school, I'm talking about classic rods, reels, lures, and equipment from the golden era of bass fishing. Stick around, consider subscribing, and be sure to hit that bell icon. Otherwise, you won't know when we post a new video like this one. Retro bassin, kicking some ass in, wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about bill dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Bass boat making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. So, I am a sucker for <laughs> lures that are built for suckers. If there is some novelty gimmick, again, you tack on a few decades, I am caught hook, line, and sinker. And when I first discovered this bait, which by the way is not a bait that I grew up fishing at all, I knew that I had to get a couple of them and see if it could catch fish. This is by far the craziest spinner bait that I think I've ever seen. There is a lot going on here. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at this bait. We're going to look at some new in the package Blakemore double chances that I have. We're going to deep dive into a Bass Pro Shops master catalog. And of course on Retro Bass, you guys know, we don't just collect them, we cast them. So we hit the lake today with this 45-year-old bait to see if we can still catch a bass today. So first things I'll start with before I go through the actual bait itself is the packaging. And by the way, I love the packaging of this thing. Really cool. So here it is. It uh, came in a couple different colors. I don't know how many it came in, but I've got two. And it's the Double Chance from Blakemore. Let's see if there's any good verbiage on here. Uh, so this thing, it's a 3 8 ounce. It's got a Sampo ball bearing swivel from Blakemore Lures. Uh, and it's got a center mounted blade. We're going to talk a little bit more about the blade design. But definitely, definitely very unique. So there we've got it. This is in a, looks like a black spinner bait. And when we get to this part, uh, we'll talk about it, but it looks like it's got a blue a grub with a little black skirt. And the other one I have is this one, and this is more akin to the one that I was fishing with today. And this is a sort of orange and brown, almost a crawfish pattern. Looks like it's got a copper blade on it. And there's that little skirted grub that we'll talk about in just a second. So right out of the gates, I'm sure you guys are pretty confused, as was I. I really didn't know what the whole point of this bait was until I kind of got into some of the ads and read it and at least figured out the theory of why this thing was supposed to be an awesome spinner bait. So as far as the breakdown of the lure itself, first off, we'll start with the normal and then get to the not so normal parts of this lure. On this end, it does look like a pretty standard old school spinner bait. It's got a, a cone head a living rubber skirt, and uh, a little old school hook that I probably would swap out if I could. Pretty normal um, light wire arm going to a closed pin style eye here. So far, so good with a Blakemore double chance. But here is where it just gets wild. Instead of the traditional swivel and blade that comes off the top arm, it's actually been replaced with this, a hook, a grub, and on this one, I realize it's missing the skirt, but it's supposed to be a little mini skirted grub. And then in the middle, it's got a ball bearing swivel, some sort of plastic um, sort of wrap on it, going down to a uh, Colorado blade right there. So pretty wild, wild looking bait. I'm not sure what the, the object of this thing was. I think it was to sort of combat those bass that might be hitting the blade of a spinnerbait and you're missing them. So we hit a pond today with this bait and it's a place you guys have seen me fish pretty often 
with spinner baits and the fish there are definitely susceptible to hitting that blade. I've noticed that because I miss a fair bit of fish there on spinnerbait, which is a little bit unusual for me. And a lot of the ones I do catch are hooked right in the bottom jaw, which I think is indicative of them biting that blade and me setting the hook upward. So in theory, if you could entice a bass to hit either the main bait or this top bait, you should miss less fish. Now, <laughs> looking at this bait, which I swear has more hardware than Ace, talking a fish into hitting it might be the challenge. All right, so next stop, we are gonna hit the water with the Blakemore Double Chance, try to catch a bass, and I will see you guys back in the studio. We're gonna take a deep dive into this 1984 Bass Pro Shops catalog. They've got a great spread on this lure that I think you guys are gonna get a kick out of. I'll see you soon. All right, here we are back on one of my favorite little spinnerbait farm or <laughs> apartment ponds. Got about half an hour to fish. I'm gonna run around the bank of this thing, probably make one quick lap with the old Blakemore spinnerbait. What's interesting about this body of water, and you guys have seen me fish before, I throw a lot of spinnerbaits here, and I feel like my hookup ratio is actually pretty low. And talking to some of the bass and buds out there, I think the fish might have been hitting that top blade pretty often because sometimes I miss them outright and other times I hook them in that bottom jaw. So there's two spinner baits that I've wanted to try for a while here. One is from Night Lures, which I'm saving for a, another episode. And the other one is this, this Blakemore spinner bait. So what I theorize is that if those short striking fish we're hitting that top blade. With this particular bait, I might catch them on this top little uh, grub. Now, yes, the blade itself is down low, so if they were truly going after just the flash, maybe it wouldn't apply. But at the same time, if these guys are kind of sitting down, looking up, or kind of coming down on that bait, going after the top, this one might be the trick. Now, truth be told, this is a little bit bigger spinner bait than I'm used to fishing here. I tend to like those finesse spinnerbaits here, sort of like the Oki Bug or the Jensen Extractor or stuff like that. Throwing it on a spinning rod with some light line, I feel like that finesse approach is best for sort of micro bodies of water like this. So this is definitely much more of a bigger profile all around. It's a heavier spinnerbait. It's got a big loud skirt on it. There's more hardware than Ace on this thing. There's a, a lot, a lot going on. So we'll see. So I don't expect to catch a bunch of dinks on this, but maybe, just maybe, we can get one big old girl to jump on the Blakemore. Oh. Right, that was definitely a hit. And I don't even know what the fish hit, but that felt really weird. Hmm. So the water in this lake is definitely muddier than um, it usually is. We've had some pretty wicked rains in Texas and I would say the water level in here is up about a foot or two, believe it or not, and it is pretty darn cloudy. I'm still going to fish this thing pretty fast just because I don't want to catch that bottom, and there's a ton of bottom down there to catch. Another thing I'm noticing is this top hook, it doesn't have a swivel on this grub, and occasionally it sort of flips over on itself and uh, kind of swims at a weird angle. It causes the whole spinnerbait to veer off to one side and just not feel great. So I don't love that this thing doesn't have a swivel on it. I kind of wish it did. I know that would just be like a ton of hardware at this point, but I feel like that would make it fish just a little bit better.
Oh my god. Oh my god, this big fish. Holy crap, that's a big fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness not a giant fish but definitely a giant fish for this place holy cow so bass and buds I literally fished the perimeter of this pond had about half an hour to do so and I could not get a sniff on this Blakemore spinnerbait I was literally just about to give up I think I had one or two more casts left and then we got this solid solid little like what one two pounder on the old Blakemore spinnerbait so the big question is which hook did he hit I know this thing's got two different hooks and it looks like he actually bit the main one so that is interesting I wasn't sure you know with this pond I've had a ton of short strikes as of late and some of you guys are saying these things are probably hitting the blades so I thought I would throw this to see if that changed the uh, outcome at all and well I got a fish but he hit the normal thing so who knows <laughs> let's get him unhooked so there we go that is a solid looking little Texas bass so what's interesting about this bait and I got to fish this bait for about half an hour today I gotta be honest with you it's not my favorite spinnerbait of all time, uh, but it probably got the biggest bass I've gotten on a spinnerbait in quite a while. So what's interesting about this bait is a couple things. Number one, it's got a blade which is in the middle of the bait itself. That's sort of interesting. It still thumps, um, but it definitely feels a little bit odd to have that blade in the middle. It's got the standard um, bottom part of the uh, spinnerbait with the head standard skirt which I actually swapped out old school hook up here in place of where the blade would normally be you've got this which is actually a little hook with a little curly tail on it I was kind of thinking that in this pond this would be where my hits came from you know I miss I would say in this place about 40% of the fish hit oddly either I miss them all together or I hook them in the bottom of the jaw so I had a pretty big suspicion they were hitting that top blade. Uh, that being said, this is not a blade. So if they are going after the blade itself, they're still probably hitting somewhere in the middle. So that was interesting. Now initial thoughts on how this thing fished. It cast just fine, no issue with casting. As far as the retrieve, I feel like this blade worked most of the time. It would occasionally go kind of quiet on me during the first like five feet of a retrieve. You know that feeling when you just don't get that spinnerbait thump that it used to? So that would happen occasionally, I'm not sure why. As far as this top hook, obviously on the fish we caught, it didn't seem to help because it hit the bottom hook. But this thing actually caught up a lot more in the grass. This is a grassy little pond. While this bottom hook was pretty insulated from the grass, this top hook actually caught a little bit more than I would like. We'll make a few more casts, but I'm just about out of real estate and out of time. All right, well, we're back in the studio. Thanks for uh, taking a walk around the bank with us. We didn't catch uh, a lot of fish today. Well, we just caught one. But boy, what a nice fish on a bait that, to be honest, I wasn't sure would actually catch a bass. So right now, I want to take a deep dive into this. This is my 1984 Bass Pro Shops Master Catalog. They've got a great one-page spread on this bait. I think this bait was probably pretty short-lived in the year after, in 85, the spread shrunk down by about 50%, and then the year after that, I didn't see it. So I've got a feeling that this little bladed bait was definitely a flash in the pond. All right, so here is my 1984 Bass Pro Shops Master Catalog, and they've got a really cool spread on the Blakemore Double Chance. So here we go, looks like some different uh, spinner baits here, but look at that, a full one page dedicated to this revolutionary new spinner bait. <laughs> it, maybe it was a short revolution, I don't know. Okay, so let's look at uh, two of these different baits. The first one, let's focus on this guy. This is the one that I don't have, and it looks like this is called the twirl spin. 
So it's got one blade in the standard position. It looks like the second one comes from that center mounted blade position. I guess my main question looking at this is why? This doesn't seem like it would alleviate that short strike or this bass hitting the blades. And why not just put a blade up on the arm, a second blade, as opposed to that center mounted position. So I'm not sure why you would do that. I guess you gain one extra ball bearing swivel um, for whatever that's worth. And then the other one is this, which is the one that we've got, which is called the old center spin. So this one, in theory, makes a little bit more sense, right? So you've got your standard um, spinnerbait body. You've got that center mounted blade. And then up here, you've got that extra little attractor where it's got the grub. And then it's got the skirt, which my particular bait was missing. So there you go. That looks like what it is in black. So let's check out. It's got some different colors here. Um, I see white, chartreuse, black, crawfish. That's the one that we were fishing with today. And chartreuse and blue. Ooh, I kind of like that. that. That's a nice little look with a blue grub and the uh, chartreuse skirt. I actually do like that. So these are both available for $2.79. And let's see what it says here. Uh, Double Chance offers two lures in one. After years of development and testing, uh, Double Chance introduces these exciting new spinnerbaits. There's nothing like them on the water, and I can attest to that. The secret is their new wire bending technique that makes the lure weedless and helps eliminate short strikes while offering twice the attracting power of traditional spinnerbaits. It's like having two lures in one. So the center spin, it says it's got twice the hooking power, uh, this hot new lure producer features a centrally located, deep cupped, nickel plated spinnerbait blade. The unique wire bending technique leaves each end of the lure free to present two different bait offerings, both of which have been landing bass for years. You get twice the hooking and attracting power. One side features a traditional spinnerbait skirt and head, while the other offers live living rubber legs and a swimming grub tail. Double the chance, center spin is a killer. Three-eighths of an ounce. And now let's look at this one, which is, uh, I'd like to see this one live. It says twice the attracting power. The twirl spin features two turbulent causing spinners that drive lunkers wild. The center of the lure's wire features a stabilizing ball bearing swivel with a high speed nickel plate, while the top position has a freewheeling ball bearing swivel and a normal speed gold blade. Hmm, interesting. Okay, that's interesting. It looks like there's two different size blades. Okay, so it's got a high speed blade and a normal speed blade. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, the combination of two different vibrations, the flashing gold and nickel blades, and the lively action make this an irresistible lure for all game fish. Try buzzing it through cover or bouncing it down a cliff face or drop off. Then hang on. Well, that is a pretty cool one-page spread on this lure. Yes, it was revolutionary maybe back in 1984. By 1985, they decided that you only need about half a page to cover the revolution. And I think by 86, the revolution was over. But I'm glad we got on the water with this pretty cool bait. So by the way, guys, all of the official retro bass and gear that I'm rocking these days is available at txprovisions.com. I will drop a link to that down below, but thank you so much for the support. We dropped merch, I think it's been about a month ago, and the response has been pretty work. Until next time, guys, keep the carpet side up, and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro.